Health inspectors, what's the worst violation you've ever seen? My stepmother is the lead health inspector for a decent-sized suburban town. While I have never asked what the worst thing she has witnessed as part of her job was, I do know of one instance that was pretty gross. So a truck full of lobsters was traveling down the highway and crashed. The police came and eventually they towed the truck. As a board of health inspector, my stepmother was consulted to see if any of the lobsters were viable, and she told them no. The load is a total loss since there were literally lobsters scattered across the highway, covered in dirt, sand, etc. Fast forward 24 hours later, and one of the restaurants in town ran a special. Twin lobsters for $19.99. Apparently, the owner of the trucking towing company knew the restaurant owner pretty well, so they made a deal whereby the restaurant would pay a very discounted price for the road lobsters. The restaurant would turn around and illegally serve the lobsters to unsuspecting customers or sell them out of a truck behind the restaurant. I'm not sure what the repercussions were, but I think they were shut down for like a week. They closed shortly thereafter and now there's a new restaurant there. The towing company lost their contract to tow vehicles and semi-trucks with the town and the state. You aren't covered for lobster crashes on your insurance plan? A little weird. Story 2 Not a health inspector, but my mom told me the story some time ago. When she was in her early 20s, she had started working as a waitress for the restaurant in this big, fancy hotel. Just a few days after she started working there, the hotel was hosting some big event, so there were a ton of super rich people staying there, and thus the restaurant was super busy. So my mom goes into the kitchen at one point and sees that one of the chefs is clearly sick. He's coughing and hacking and continually wiping his runny nose on a handkerchief right as he's making food. So my mom goes over to her boss and is like, hey, uh, this chef is pretty sick. Can't be working right now. He's going to make everyone else sick. Her boss tells her that the guy said he's fine and not to worry about it. So my mom goes to the sick guy and tells him that he has to leave to prevent the food from being contaminated. He tells her that he tried to call in sick, but the boss told him that they were going to be too busy and they needed him. And if he didn't show up for work, he'd be fired. So my mom goes back to the boss and he admits that, yeah, he knew the guy was really sick, but he didn't care if everyone else got sick as long as they got through the event. My mom tells her boss that this is wrong and that he needs to send the guy home, take back everyone's food, refund their money, throw out all the food that may have been contaminated, close the place down, and clean it up. He simply just laughs at her and tells her she's fired. So she went and did the logical thing. She walked out into the dining room, stood up on top of a table, and shouted to everyone at the event that the boss forced a sick man to work today, and all of their food was probably contaminated. There was practically a riot. Everyone crowded around and screamed at the boss, demanding their money back. In the end, the restaurant was temporarily closed. Everyone got their money back. The boss of the restaurant was fired by the owner of the hotel, and mom got to keep her job. Very cool. Your mom is a real MVP, man. Story 3. Former inspector here. I once discovered a rat infestation in the kitchen of a hospital. They asked me if I could prove my quote-unquote suspicions. I pointed out the numerous foodstuffs with 1-inch to 2-inch circular holes chewed in them, but they didn't seem convinced. I showed them the trail of droppings and footprints coming in and going from a hole in the floor drain, but they still didn't seem convinced. I showed them the three deceased rats I had discovered under and around equipment, I think they began to believe me at that point. Citations included rat infestation and absolutely deplorable cleaning practices. Story 4. I used to have a job working as an inspector for storage tanks at places like dairies and factories. I went to a cheesecake factory once to test a milk storage tank. It had just been cleaned and was being prepped to be filled with a tanker full of milk. I noticed the floor of the tank was covered in bleach, and it turned out the floor manager couldn't be arsed to spend the time sucking out the rest of the cleaning fluid used in the cleaning process, and as standard just filled the tank with milk on top of a dozen gallons of bleach. His theory was that there was enough milk to dilute the bleach to be acceptable consumption levels. I wrote a report, and he was promptly fired. My 12-gallon estimate is just that, an estimate. It was a huge milk storage silo, 4,000 liters, I think, and roughly half an inch of the floor of the tank was covered still in cleaning fluid. The dilutions we're talking about probably wouldn't have been harmful or even tasteable after being pasteurized and mixed with cheesecake ingredients, but that's also a guess and it's also not the point. My guy, you already went through the terrible trouble of cleaning it, 
what the hell is an extra 5 to 10, 15 minutes max to properly finish the job? I'm glad he got fired. Story 5. Did food safety inspection at a large slaughterhouse for a while, and we did our own inspections each shift, and the government inspector stopped by once a day too. One day, I came around a corner, and one of the workers who was running service for the butchers had dropped a piece of ham on the floor. So the proper way to handle this for him was to leave it there and call for a reinspector to come pick it up, take it out to carve off any contaminated bits, and rinse it in boiling water. Now it relatively often happens that meat was dropped on the floor, it's just very, very hard to avoid it when running in a factory setting with human labor, so this was common. What was uncommon was what the guy did next. First, he tried catching it as it fell, which would have been fine, no contact with any surface, and he could have just thrown it back into the tub it had fallen out of. He didn't catch it though, and it landed on the floor. Thinking that no one was watching, he tried picking it up and dropped it again. He did this three times. So first and foremost, he's not supposed to be touching anything that's been on the floor. It cross-contaminates his hands and he has nowhere to put the contaminated product anyway. But he did this three times and dropped it three times. Freshly carved hams can be slippery when wearing vinyl gloves. He then, out of pure frustration and annoyance at the unwieldy ham, dropped down on all fours and proceeded to pick up the raw, freshly cut 6 kilo ham by his teeth, stood up, ham dangling from his choppers, and dropped it into the tub with around 600 kilograms of product and drove off with the tube for processing. He was fired a few minutes after that and the entire tub of product had to be discarded. Story 6 when my son was about five or so, we had a nanny who used to look after him, and she used to take him to a local pub where one of her friends worked. He got used to sitting at the bar, eating a packet of crisps, what we call chips, and drinking a soda. I'm starting to realize, though, as I recount this, that it doesn't reflect too well on my parenting skills, but oh well, he's 17 now, so I guess it's too late for social services to come and take him away. Anyway, the nanny was great, no matter what you might say. And the nanny and her friend were around the corner in the other bar chatting away when a couple of uh, besuited gentlemen wandered into the bar. My son was laying a line of chips along the bar and one of the gents started talking to him. It's worth noting that the regulars in the bar were used to him being there and often referred to him as boss. They let him pour them drinks and so on under the supervision of the bar staff and needless to say, it is illegal for five-year-olds to be employed as bar staff even in the UK. I'm in charge here. What would you like to drink? Offered my son, scooting around the back of the bar. No, it's okay, thanks. What are the crisps for? Oh, I'm feeding my friend, my son replied. Really? Where's your friend? He lives in that little hole. My son pointed to a hole in the wall towards the end of the bar, and sometimes he comes out and I feed him. On cue, a small mouse appeared out of the hole, ran along the bar, and started eating the crisps. The men were environmental health officers. The pub was shut down that week and never reopened. Luckily, they weren't police, otherwise the nanny's friend would have been in serious trouble. This story was pieced together from the report of the nanny, and also my son, who thought the whole thing was hilarious. The nanny's friend was quite relieved as she hated the job anyway. I love the fact that this mouse can enter the stage on cue as if he was best friends with the little boy. Now, if you also agree that this story looked like at least the rough draft of a Disney movie, hello Ratatouille, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more funny content. Let's go ahead and get back to the stories. Story 7. I had a health inspector tell me this story. There was a family in which the elderly mother and a handicapped sibling used wheelchairs and another sibling lived in the house with them and did all the driving, etc. The health department got a phone call from the local wheelchair company. The brother stopped by and picked up a new custom-built wheelchair for his sister and for his mother and returned within about 30 minutes, saying that the sister's wheelchair hadn't been made to the right specifications. It was too small. After we left, the staff noticed several roaches on the chair, so the guy I met got a call. Apparently, it was summer, Midwest, meaning both hot and humid, and the house was all locked up with no open windows for ventilation, curtains drawn, etc., the inspector entered the house and he said it was so stiflingly hot that he started to get dizzy and he thought he hallucinated. He said that there was a sound like leaves rustling in the fall and the walls and floors were kind of vibrating. He then realized it was because they were literally covered in roaches. He immediately evacuated the three people living there and the next day they tented and sprayed the house. He went in in a Tyvek suit and knee-high rubber boots 
and said that the deceased roaches were about two and a half feet deep in most parts of the house. It's moments like these that make me think that people just straight up sometimes open a portal to hell in their homes or something. Story 8. Not a health inspector, but my mom used to work at this restaurant where the owner just did not give a crap. It was a Mexican restaurant, and so my mom told me that once a lady came in asking for caldo de res, beef soup, but they didn't have any more meat, at least not the one you use for that dish. They were about to let the lady know when the owner stepped up and told the lady that her food would be right out. The server and my mom were both confused as to what she was going to do. So this lady goes and literally digs through the frickin' trash and pulls out some beef, some still with bone. She then ran it through some water, cooked it, and served it to that poor lady. My mom says the lady was even sucking on the bone and she almost felt sick watching her. My mom quit that job soon after. Asked my mom again about it and here is what she said. The bone and meat was not raw. It was left over from people who had ordered the same thing. They had almost ran out of that soup, all the meat was gone, so they thought they would not serve anymore. The owner grabbed the bone and meat from the trash, rinsed it, and threw it back in what was left of the soup, heated it up for a bit, and served it. Just thought I needed to clarify this. Story 9. Not a health inspector, but I worked as an assistant cook in a restaurant. Two weeks into the job, I opened a cupboard to get a can of tomato sauce, and I saw a huge tarantula scuttling away behind the cans. I told the boss what I had seen so that maybe we should get someone to deal with a huge spider living in the kitchen. My boss turns to me and says, Ah, I see you've met Eduardo. Just don't put your hand too close to him and you'll be alright. Later, another cook proceeded to explain to me that the spider had been living there for two years and they just allowed it because he kept rodents and roaches away. This is a true story, so know this. Every time that you think about swatting a spider... Remember that there is a possibility that a friendly spider is guarding your favorite restaurant's food against nasty critters. Story 10. For as bad as some of these stories are, I hope people understand that people in restaurants do touch your food. There's nothing that you eat in a restaurant that hasn't been directly touched by somebody in the kitchen. And some of you might be thinking, well, why don't they all just wear latex gloves? Actually, there's a couple of reasons. They break far too easily, among others, that make it impractical, but mostly important, if you only wear gloves, then whatever it is that you think is on their hands is now just on their latex gloves. Compulsive hand washing, hair nets, and keeping the place properly cleaned is as much as anybody can reasonably expect. Incidentally, Applebee's has to be the cleanest place I've ever worked at. If you were standing around, they'd hand you a toothbrush and tell you scrub the grout between the tiles. Every day it was like a good two hours of cleaning after the place was closed. That's what a good head start. Story 11. Not me, but my cousin. She was a health inspector for the city of Melbourne, Australia many years ago. And her advice? Never eat at Chinatown. There's dead fish floating in tanks of seafood restaurants with barely alive fish in the same tanks. Slime and mold in said tanks. Rusty surfaces used as chopping boards and mold covered wooden chopping boards. Raw meats prepared together with raw vegetables. The lady washing the dishes at the cash register was the same lady that cleaned the toilets and made the dumplings. She never washed her hands. And it doesn't matter how much you pay, whether you spent $200 on your meal or $20, they're all as filthy as each other. The most expensive and well-known ones were actually the worst offenders. Cockroaches also. Cockroaches everywhere. There is no such thing as an expiry date. Sauces mask everything. There is a saying here, though, that many people are aware of. The nastier the place, the better the dumplings taste. Story 12. My mom's an inspector. My favorite is the woman who bought a bulk bag of rice from China. She starts working her way through it, and the rice starts tasting a little funky. Whatever, it's not too bad, and it was a great deal. Gets three-fourths of the way through the bag and finds a mummified bird. The strange taste was because the rice absorbed it and preserved the corpse. The grossest one is probably the fish place that caught fire but didn't burn down. Turns out public health and the fire department need to go in to condemn the place. Mom comes in with her hard hat and some frickin' book boots and the fire chief with her. The smell is horrible. Critters everywhere. Fire chief bails in the first five minutes to spew outside. Mom worked in a slaughterhouse and is metal AF, so she just mouth breathes her way through it. Then she starts hearing little plinking noises and feeling impacts on her helmet. It was freaking critters on the ceiling falling on her. The place definitely got condemned. 
The most hilarious one was probably a call that came through for a skunk bite. Turns out this toddler was at the grandparents' house on the back braised patio, sees a kitty and rushes towards it in excitement. Definitely not a kitty, though. The skunk sprays the kid full in the face. The kid is screaming, falls on the skunk. Skunk is freaking out and bites the kid. Grandparents are horrified and probably never allowed to babysit the kid ever again. Story 13. I'm not a health inspector, but I've worked in dozens of fast food restaurants in my teens and 20s to know a clean kitchen from a dirty one. I worked for a company that made take-and-bake Chicago-style vegan pizzas in Seattle. Having worked for many fast food restaurants, I was shocked at the following. There was no ventilation. They pre-cooked the pizza crust in large walk-in ovens. But the ventilation fan above it never worked, so a few times a month, people who go home early from breathing in too much exhaust. There's no smoke detectors or fire extinguishers anywhere. When a small fire did break out, the first words from the boss were, Why did you call the fire apartment? None of the food, be it canned or perishable, was ever dated when it arrived. The dough roller was cleaned only once a month and only by a professional. Working at a Pizza Hut, they cleaned it twice a day. Got an oral warning when I took it apart and cleaned with mineral oil I brought with me. And out of a staff of 10 people, me and another worker were the only ones with food handlers' permits. Driver who delivered the pizzas to QFC and Safeway stores had no valid license. Hippie employees built a compost pile for waste, which attracted rodents. And when it rained, juices flowed down and under the outdoor walk-in fridge, propped up with cement blocks, creating a cesspool for insects. Hand washing sink was falling off the wall. The paper towel rack was basically a coat hanger nailed to the wall. On storage racks, chemicals stored above canned and perishable food. Cat living in the kitchen because, you know, to deal with the rats attracted by the compost pile. Employees dropping pre-cooked crusts on the floor, just dusting it off and using them anyway. Never cleaning the food slicer after slicing up buckets of green peppers, onions, and mushrooms. They had three sinks for wash, rinse, and sanitize, but all they did was wash and rinse. When I showed them that they needed to fill that last sink with lukewarm water and half a cap of bleach, they often filled it with hot water, thus making the bleach evaporate quickly and defeat its whole purpose. When I left that job, I reported them to the health board for sure. Story 14. I'm a health inspector. I actually shut down a restaurant today for failing their inspection. The following are several things I've seen fairly recently at different places, mostly Asian or Indian places. First, vent hoods so dirty and clogged grease was dripping into the food, today's restaurant. Second, moldy food on the cook line about to be served, also today's restaurant. Three, a dead cockroach in the raw shrimp bucket on the cook line. When I pointed it out, the cook fished out the roach with his finger, threw it away, and proceeded to throw some shrimp on the grill like nothing was wrong. Fourth, a restaurant so infested with roaches, the roaches were crawling over the prepared food and the waitstaff were just flicking them off and bringing the plates to the customers. Fifth, walked in to do an inspection and a guy had been living in the restaurant under a table. He had a sleeping bag, all of his life's accessories, and he was smoking cigarettes, eating all of his food, etc. under the prep table. And six, a faux restaurant had a giant pot of uh, what they call soup. That was room temperature and they just threw whatever meat and veggies and whatever else they didn't use that day into the pot and left it out overnight. This was their base for the foe the next day. I've only been doing this four years and I have hundreds of stories, but enjoy those few. Story 15. Here are a couple I remember from my wife's days as a restaurant inspector for the state health department. First, a complaint from a grocery store that the Chinese restaurant next door was raiding their dumpster each night and taking all the products they could find. Second, walking into another Chinese restaurant and seeing pigeons in a cage in the back room. You know, just regular city pigeons. Asking, you're not serving these to the customers, are you? And being told, oh, no, no, those are just for us. I don't mean to disparage Chinese people by citing these two incidents about Chinese restaurants. But the truth is that many Chinese people come to the U.S. on a shoestring budget and cut corners as much as they can. Plus, the standards of healthy food service are often very strange to them. Telling someone that they can't cut the lettuce for the salad bar with the same knife they just used to cut a raw chicken is like telling them they have to stand on their head before cooking something. They just don't get it. They always did it this way at home. Your body gets used to fighting off the bacteria you grow up with. And people from the other side of the planet have bodies that can handle bacteria we aren't used to in the Midwest part of the U.S., but that's a very hard point to get across. Here's one more from another side of the economic spectrum. 
I have a friend who plays in a band which has some national recognition. I won't say any more than that, but they've had a few top 10 hits. He told me once that his band was booked to play a very expensive corporate New Year's party for a very rich corporation. The party took place at a very swanky hotel in a big city. He and the band had to load in through the hotel restaurant kitchen. Unfortunately, the sewers had backed up and the entire kitchen of this swanky hotel restaurant was ankle deep in raw sewage. But there was no way the hotel manager was going to go out into the party room and explain to a host of $1,000 a plate diners that the kitchen was closed on New Year's Eve. So the kitchen staff kept cooking and the waiters kept serving. They put on rubber boots before entering the sewer kitchen to grab the next plate. So the moral of the story is that food service is all about the money first. Understandable because if there's no money, there's no food service. But you are just as likely to get food poisoning at the most expensive restaurant in town as you are at some local hole in the wall. Sometimes more so because there's just more money at stake. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and kept a cool stomach while we all listened to them. And if you made it this far, I'm sure you're also going to enjoy fast food workers. What should we never order? Story 5 will surprise you and probably change your life. I'll see you in that video and thank you for watching this one.